Hi, today I'm looking at Sail Away by David Gray. Um, just an acoustic song. I mean, there's drums and, and bass and things on the, the original recording, but I'm just looking at the acoustic guitar part, the, the sort of the main chord part. Um, you need to have a capo on first fret for this. And I'm just going to take each section of the song and, and look at them individually. There's a whole load of chords in this. That none of them are that hard to play, but there's quite a lot of chords, and there'll be some that you've maybe never played before. Uh, so there's some unusual chord shapes in this song. Okay, so we'll just start with the intro, just one chord for the intro, and it's 16 beats, so that's four bars of 4-4 four, four on this one chord. And this chord's in the song a lot. Now capo first fret, and you've got to hold this. Now this is the middle part of this bar chord. Now forgetting about the capo, that's actually a C minor bar chord. So what I want to do is have these two notes from the chord and the first finger just on the third string. So this is the eighth fret, again forgetting that the capo's there, this is eighth, tenth with the little finger on the fourth string, tenth with the third finger on the fifth string. And not everyone can do this, it depends on how long your thumb is, depends on the, the neck of your particular guitar, but if possible, you want to get your thumb over the top there, pushing on that bass note, which is eighth fret. Now the, the tricky part here is that, depending on the guitar, on this, this guitar, the neck is a little bit kind of fat there, so it's a bit tricky. I've got to try to push on there, but I want to keep the first two strings open. Quite hard to do that and have the thumb over the top. If on your guitar it's difficult, don't bother with this and just avoid hitting that, th that string here. But you definitely want to have the first two strings open. So we've got eight on the, the bass string if you can reach it, and then ten, ten, eight, open, open. Obviously, those opens are actually ones because the capo's there. And that's all the intro is, it's that chord for four bars, and it's this kind of rhythm. If I just strum the rhythm. That sort of strum, it doesn't have to be exactly that. Uh, that's, that's one, if you have lessons with me, or if, if you have had lessons with me, you'll know I call that one strum number two. It's, it's probably the second most common strum that you'll, you'll get. So it's down, 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 up, up, down, down, down. Okay, then it goes to a chorus. Now the chorus is that same chord we just played for the intro, with your thumb over the top if you can. Just one bar, so that's four beats. And then we move the same shape, exactly the same shape, down to here, which is third fret and then fifth fret with those two. I'm, the numbers I'm talking about are ignoring the capo, so that's one, two, three, four, five and you play exactly the same chord with the two strings open on the end. So it's Then we go back up to the first one again. I'm not naming these at the moment just because they're, the chord names are quite unusual and it's not that relevant at the moment what they're called, so we're not going to talk about the names plus the capo confuses matters. So we're just Think of it as the first shape down to the second shape. That's the first one. And then we do two chords that I can name because they're ones you'll be familiar with. Just G, standard G, three finger G, and an E minor. And these are only half a bar each. I'm just going to play the verse up to that point. And then we go back to the first chord again. Only half a bar. So we go from that chord to a D over F sharp, which is a normal D chord, but with your thumb over the top there. So that's uh, that's technically it's third fret, 
But if you were playing it actually as a D, you'd be here and it'd be there, second fret. But because of the capo, we're at third fret. So we go. And then G to E minor again, half a bar. And then we go back to G, but this time it's a G6. Now the difference is instead of that, this third finger goes to the second string, so now the first string's open. And here's a whole bar. Then half a bar of an A, standard A chord, and then a half bar of an E minor. So it's all a bit disjointed because there's so many different chords, but I'm just going to play that slowly for you. Okay, so that's the chorus. Right, now the verse, first verse is slightly longer than the, the next verse, but if I just talk about the first verse, um, th when you get to the net later verse, it's very easy because we're just missing a section out. So the first verse, it's got a very unusual chord, another chord um, that you're not gonna see in many songs at all. So the shape, second fret on the first string, second fret on the third string like that and thumb over the top on the sixth string they're all second fret so we've got two open open two open two it's a lovely chord but really unusual so that's one bar and then we go to the second chord of the verse which you may remember was like this the same shape that we started with. Now when you do that change, you might have noticed how I did it then. I left my thumb and my first finger in exactly the same place. So we go. Lift that one up, keep those where they are, add those two. It's a nice change and then that repeats. Repeats again. And then we go up to the first chord, which was that same shape, at eight and 10. And then you move back two frets, so six and eight. And take this finger away and put the second finger on instead. So. You know how I said the first chord shape that we did, this shape was from a minor bar chord, or well, this is from a major bar chord. So we've got six, eight, eight, seven, open, open. So I'll just play that whole verse sequence for you. And then that whole sequence repeats. Now in the second verse later on, it doesn't repeat. You just do that once. But in this first verse, we repeat all of that that I just played. So we've ended on this chord for the second time. And you just move exactly the same shape back two frets. So it's four, six, six, five, open, open. Bar. And it's a bar of E minor, but it's just a single strum that rings for the whole bar like this. Two, three, four. And that's the end of the verse. So just to clarify that, I'm going to play that whole verse with the repeat.
Right, now that's everything that's actually in the song. That's all the, the parts for the song, all of the chords and everything. So at that point, after that first verse, we then repeat the chorus. Then you repeat the verse, but without the repeated section that I was talking about a minute ago. Then there's three choruses, um, which I, th I think there's three vocal choruses. Then there's an instrumental chorus. I think that's the right order, but there's basically four choruses in a row. Uh, and then on the end, you just play the intro because it's just the, the first chord again for four bars. I think maybe the fourth bar is just a single strum. Uh, but anyway, that's that's everything that's in it. So now I'm going to talk about what, what these chords are actually called. You, If you're not interested in that, stop the video here. Click like um, if you liked it and subscribe if you haven't already. If you're interested though, I'll, I'll just talk about the names quickly. Okay, so the chord names. Now, to make this a bit simpler, what I've done is taken the capo off. And the, the reason why I've done that is because when you've got a capo on, put my capo back on anywhere, like, you know, say I've got a capo there. If, I, if I'm teaching someone a song and I play that, I'd, I'd say it's D with a capo on fifth. Or if I play that, I'd say G, because they're familiar chord shapes that you know as D and G. Uh, but really, because of the capo, they're not actually D and G anymore. They're something else because D and G are down here. As soon as you put a capo on and you play somewhere else, then you, you're actually playing different chords. So the identity of the chord changes when you put a capo on. Just like if I play a D chord and I tune my guitar all out of tune and play that, it won't be a D chord anymore. It just looks like one. So just to make it simpler for the chord names, I've taken the capo off which means these shapes that we've just been playing, like the first one, which was there, I'm gonna move it back one, because I would, if I'm playing a G, I'd move it back one from where we were just doing it with the capo. I hope that makes sense. So the first chord is that. That's a B minor add 11. Now, sometimes with some of these chords, you can, you can sort of give them slightly different names. It depends on how you, you um, number the notes that are involved, but I, I would call that B minor add 11. Okay, the second chord, same shape as the first one. It's an F sharp minor, but it's got a couple of other notes in there. Now one of them's a seven, so it's an F sharp minor seven. And then the last note, the extra note is an 11. So you could call it F sharp minor seven add 11, which I suppose is technically what it's called, F sharp minor seven add 11. But I would just call it F sharp minor 11. The difference is a minor 11 chord is meant to have a ninth in there as well. but. I don't think it matters too much. I think we could just call that F sharp minor 11. The next chord that's in the song is a G. So you probably know that one. E minor is the next one. And then a bit later, there's a D over F sharp. Well, that's, I mentioned that when we were learning the song. Normal D chord, which you would normally just play four strings for. D over F sharp, quite a common chord. You just put your thumb over the top, second fret, play all of the strings. Then there's a G6 chord, which was one I also, I think I named as we were looking at it. It's just standard G, three finger G, but the third finger goes on the second string instead. There's other shapes for all of these chords. There's other ways of playing G6, but that's the one he uses. So the first string is now open. G6 or G major 6. Uh, we've got an A chord, standard A major. And then in the verse, we've got this really nice chord here. I think I mentioned the name of that one. That's a D6 over F sharp. Um, because the, the capo was on, obviously it's not really a D6 over F sharp, it's something else because the capo is pushing it up. But if it's here, it's a D6 over F sharp. There's just two more chords in the song that, that we haven't played yet. There's this one, which is towards the end of the verse. Now that one is where we, where we came down from this. It's an A add nine. It comes from this A bar chord, A add nine. And then the only other chord to look at is this one. <clears throat> There's two ways you can play this one. It's basically moving this shape back to that's another way of playing g6 so it's just g6 again 
Now, if you listen very carefully in the song, sometimes it sounds like instead of that, he's doing this. So the only difference is this first finger is on the third fret of the second string. So you come from this one. Or you could do this. I think hearing it now, it's probably that one in the song. But either way, it's called a G6. That's G6. And so is that. And so is that. Uh, and that's all of the individual chords that are in the song. Um, if you've got any questions about any of those, then, uh, or if you disagree with any of the names, please put it in the comments. Okay, uh, as I said before, please click like if you like this one. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. And if you want to suggest other, th other songs for me to look at, then uh, please do so and I'll, I'll hopefully better help. Okay, thanks.